The Prophet ﷺ received the first revelation in the cave of Hira, <coughs> Jabal Hira, Jabal Nur. And he returned shaking to his wife Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. The first verses had been revealed. Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam had appeared and he had embraced the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam and he had hugged him tightly until it was painful and he had instructed him to read once and the Prophet said ma'ana biqari and this happened the second time and the third time and then the revelation flowed iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq read with the name of your creator read with the name of your lord who created khalaq al-insana min alaq created man from a clot of blood iqra wa rabbuka al-akram read and your Lord is the most noble. Alladhi allama bil qalam, the one who taught with the pen. Allam al insana malam yalam. He taught man what he knew not. So in these opening verses, the first revelation, there is a mention of the physical creation of the human being. That Allah Azza wa Jal created man from a clot. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq khalaq al insana min alaq. This is the physical creation. That you have at the start a clot of blood after conception. And then at the end, you have a complete human being, this baby face, and the parents are saying, MashaAllah, the nose looks like this auntie, and the lips look like the uncle, and the eyebrows like the father, whatever. These similarities, this perfect human being, which you pick up, this little bundle of joy of uh, just a few pounds, this perfect human being, which then becomes a six foot adult, started from a clot of blood. So the beginning, the clot of blood, and the end, a perfect human being with perfectly formed physique. And the other side in the same verses, Iqra wa Rabbuk al Akram. Read with your Lord. In the first instance, Allah is described as the Khaliq, Khalaq al Insan. The Rabb who is the Khaliq, the Creator who formed you. And then, wa Rabbuk al Akram, the most noble. It's of His Karam and generosity, Allam al Insana bil Qalam, that He taught man with the pen. He gave knowledge of how to use the pen. The ulama and mufassirin say that Idris والسلام, was the first to use the pen. And he showed human beings how to use the pen and how to do mathematical calculations and how to weigh and how to navigate using the stars. All this came through the Anbiya والسلام, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to write with the pen came from the Anbiya, came from Allah. He taught with the pen. He taught with the pen. He taught man what he knew not. So this is another level of completion. The physical completion and perfection is from the clot of blood to the perfect human being. And the spiritual completion is through the knowledge of revelation, which will perfect you as a human being. Today's world has its problems, not because of a lack of technology, but because of the misuse of technology. Not because of a lack of resources, but because of a misuse of resources. The same technology can be used to protect innocence and the same technology can be used to kill innocence. The bloodbath that we're seeing in Gaza today, for example, what is it a consequence of? And yes, our governments who continue to export their munitions to these people, who are then raining them from the skies in their refugee camps. So the point is, the human being, the physical perfection, the physical perfection is from the clot of blood to when he becomes a full human being. And the spiritual perfection is when we hold on to the scripture, the revealed word, word, and we recognize the rights of the creator and the rights of the creation. So the early revelation, it has a synopsis of everything we need to know. That yes, our physical body, this is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's an amana, we should look after it. But at a spiritual level, we should also grow and it's from Allah's karam and his generosity that he gave us the book and the scripture and the ability to read and write. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa comes home and he's shaking because this is a very supernatural, a very extraordinary experience. And he says, Zammiluni, Zammiluni, cover me. And this becomes his title and Allah ta'ala addresses, addresses him as Ya ayyuhal muzzammil, Ya ayyuhal muddathir, Zammiluni, cover me. So Khadija radiallahu anha, she covers him with a shawl and he, his body calms down, he stops shaking and he tells his story and his extraordinary experience and what does she say? And I want to quote these words to you. Usually, those of you who are married here, you know, if you want to know who a good man is, 
then you ask his wife. The world might think one thing of you or another. But if your wife thinks you're a good person, khiyarukum khiyarukum li nisa'ikum, the hadith says the best of you is the best of you for your wives. How many of you have wives who behind you and in front of you praise you? Not just in front of you, to please you. And how many of you have wives that have to oblige to keep you happy because you're a grumpy person and you're, all the children cower away in the corners of the house? Here we have Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. He comes home, he's shaking, he tells his story, his confidant, Khadija radiyallahu anha. And she, what did she say? And I want to quote these words for you and I can conclude. She says, Kalla, Wallahi, ma yukhzik Allahu abada, nay, by Allah, Allah will never degrade you. This is her spontaneous response. She has so much confidence in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And what does she say? She's the not just the first woman to embrace Islam, she's the first human being to embrace Islam. She says, Innaka la tasilu rahim. You maintain the ties of kith and kin. In other words, you are good to relations. She has the sense to understand that this is a sign of a good man who keeps ties with cousins and uncles and aunties, brothers and sisters, grandparents, nephews and nieces. He doesn't break his ties. And she says, you carry other people's burdens. How many of us are willing to carry other people's burdens? How many of us have time for other people? Even for our own families. And listen to the next one. And you earn for the one who's deprived. You know, we all look for jobs for ourselves. How many of us go to do a day's labor so that those earnings can be given straight into someone else's hands? Subhanallah. You go and work for a day, for a week, for a month. You work so that you can give money to other people. You earn for the person who has nothing. And you feed the guests. Another quality. And these guests, by the way, they were not just local guests. They would be travelers from abroad as well. Complete strangers. Take them home. Give them a meal. Give them no B&B, Airbnb. There's the Arab culture and the teaching of the Anbiya. Ibrahim alayhi salam, Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam, is that you take them into your own house. And you give them bedding for free. And finally, the fifth one she mentioned, وَتُعِينُ عَلَى نَوَائِبِ الْحَقِّ and you assist upon the calamities, the difficulties in the path of truth. Even before Islam, she's saying this. You always stand up for the right causes. You're always on the right side of history. These five pieces of advice perhaps are a, a nice synopsis and a starting point for all of us. A synopsis of the seerah, the personage, the personality of Rasulullah His character, his uswa, his, his qudwa. What's in it for us? All of this. All of this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq to appreciate the sunnah and seerah and the deen and the contribution of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam and to embrace him fully in a full sense, the old and the young, the men and the women. Let us become complete Muslims. Embrace the sunnah beginning to end, A to Z, alif to ya. Let us immerse ourselves in the study of this beautiful prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have the privilege of being one of his ummatis. Let us remain ummatis. Let us be loyal to this cause. And let us rise with him under his flag on the day of Qiyamah as well because of that loyalty.